Then the other guy on the panel, he ended that article. You know, he asked her, give me that, uh, that bar of silver that she held in her hand. Give it to me just for a second. Let me have a look at it. And then he held it and he said to the camera, short this. And this is how the article ended. This is how the item ended. He said, short this. And on Reddit, everybody was celebrating. I remembered those last two words and I understood that this was meant to discourage people from holding silver. Silver is a unique commodity. It's unlike any other commodity in this respect that its price has probably, to the best of our knowledge, been suppressed, actively suppressed by governments and central banks uh, for decades. And I believe they've done that uh, through the commercial banks. They've used the commercial banks as their proxies in order to control the price of silver. Now, uh, of course, markets don't like manipulations. Eventually, markets expose manipulations because it's a distortion. It's not something which is normal. And suppression of price it encourages consumption on one hand and discourages production. So eventually, when you try to suppress the price, you get a shortage. And I believe that we are headed towards such a shortage. Uh, of course, there are above ground uh, reserves of silver that in the short term are able to meet uh, those uh, annual deficits and postpone that physical shortage. But once those above ground uh, reserves are depleted, then you arrive at a physical shortage. And then all the shenanigans are exposed. And then suddenly you can't pretend as though there's plenty of silver anymore. And uh, there are some analysts who believe that in such a case in which the price of silver jumps suddenly and the public, which holds a considerable amount of silver in the forms of both bullion and also as jewelry, as, as silverware, will simply sell that back into the market and answer any shortage that you can imagine. I happen to think that this is not the case. I think that the public nowadays has what we call a, a speculative mindset. It has acquired such a mindset through watching stocks rise so much and, and cryptocurrencies rise so much. And I think that although certain people will certainly sell their silver into the market once it reaches, for instance, $50 an ounce, there will be plenty of others who don't have any silver who will want to join this market and buy some. So I expect any increase in uh, recycling to be negligible compared to the increase in investment demand. So I think uh, silver has this huge, huge potential. Now, just in the past few days, we've seen a pullback in the price of silver. We must accept that these kinds of things will happen because so long as the banks still have control over the price of silver, they can slam it down at any point, uh, whether there is justification for that or not. So this is to be expected. But if I think about the future of the price of silver, I think it's still very bright. I think we should not be discouraged by such uh, pullbacks. Uh, I myself, I bought some more. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't manage to catch that, uh, that dip. I bought a day before the dip. But believe me, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry even if I paid a bit more. I think it's still a very good investment, even... At the current price, I think silver is still very cheap. And I appreciate you bringing up um, your thoughts on that. Uh, I think everyone should uh, take that into consideration. Silver is in great shape, similar to you, Orrin. I don't think that there's going to be a whole bunch of people selling this. Um, you know, when we get to nominal all-time highs, everyone recognizes there's been a lot of inflation. Um, since the 1980s. And I, I don't think most of the stackers are going to blink an eye as we pass nominal all-time highs. I don't think a bunch of them are going to go off it and sell their stacks. Some people might out of desperation be selling uh, here and there, but, but I think a lot of people are going to be holding out for much higher numbers. 
Um, I don't know if either of you would be willing to share where you think silver might be at the end of the year or maybe in 2025. Well, I've noticed that the price of silver has been steady in the long term uh, uptrend since October of 2022. That was two years ago. And I think silver is following the the money printing from the United States. That's my main theory. So I was expecting silver going to at least 26 a year and testing 32 at the P pivot and then 35 and it, it's picking the 32 level. And I think we have a temporary high here. I'm not expecting higher highs for gold and silver in the rest of the Q4. Uh, and I gave a target of 40 for the next year. Based on my opinion, he checked the long-term chart. That's completely possible. That's not something out of range. Um, it's very important because Silver is now, for the first time, showing a very solid uptrend in the monthly charts. It's very healthy what Silver is doing, even from the technical point of view. So I'm confident with Silver because it's showing that very important strength, increasing strength in the levels, and that gives us the idea that we are in a bullish trend for the long-term bullish trend for gold and silver uh, for the next year. Hey, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that I think that there is a good chance that we're going to see a very quick run to $50 an ounce, even by the end of the year. I think it is completely possible. I think there is very little, if we get above these current levels, above 32, above 33, I think there's very little resistance between 30 and 50. And I think we can get there at the blink of an eye. Now, of course, I can't guarantee that. Nobody knows the future. But the thing is, I do think there will be resistance at uh, the $50 level. And I do expect a retracement from 50 down, perhaps all the way back to $30 an ounce. So we might get this spike, which will frustrate many people. But after that spike, uh, there will be some consolidation and further attempts uh, during the next year, further attempts to break through the $50 level. I do think uh, long-term silver is headed higher, much higher. And this uh, $50 level, psychological $50 level, is just a temporary barrier which we will eventually cross. Well, thanks a lot for um, giving your projections on silver. I know a lot of people will appreciate that. One more thing I just wanted to get your guys' take on was the Federal Trade Commission on X had posted that uh, investing in gold was a scam. Uh, this got replied to by a lot of people in the uh, stacking community, and then eventually it got community noted, and then eventually they took it down. It was kind of comical uh, for me, and I just wanted to see if you guys uh, had any comments on that. And it was it was really funny to see that the the U.S. government is trying to create some disinfo accidentally or not on their main enemies, on their main monetary enemies or competitors of the, the U.S. dollar. So maybe this is a joke, or maybe it was a mistake. I don't know. But I'm not clear about that. But the governments, where they feel threatened, they will try to create anything to stop the competition. And maybe this is the case. I don't know. I think this is no coincidence. I think that whenever gold is rising, we are destined to see all sorts of uh, interesting uh, articles and press releases, which will try to discourage the public from owning gold and silver, for instance. On my ex account, I just documented, I think yesterday or the day before that, an article on Market Watch. Now, this is the same financial website which didn't mention gold at all. While it was rising all the way to 2600, they didn't mention gold almost at all. Only now do they care to discuss the elephant in the room to mention gold. And how do they do that by saying that, oh, gold is a bit too rich, too expensive here. It's vulnerable for a drawdown. So they mention precious metals only in a negative sense. And, and that seems to be, I don't know if it's 
coordinated from above or it's simply some kind of a mindset which exists on Wall Street that people have this, this bias against precious metals. Let me put it this way. The day you will see articles on the financial press celebrating gold and silver, celebrating precious metals, telling you to go and, and buy some because they are unstoppable, this is the day I will consider selling at least some. <laughs> And, well, and, I don't, and I don't expect that to happen for some years. Well, that, that makes sense. It, I mean, I, it does seem to be that there is uh, that there was some coordination to try and control the narrative. Uh, so I, I really appreciate your guys' uh, thoughts on that. Um, if, I, if I may add something, I don't know if everyone recalls, but, you know, when we started the Silver Squeeze movement, uh, there was a lot of public interest in silver. There was this, you know, this event in which the price of silver spiked to, I think, $30 an ounce very briefly. And there was some uh, interest in the news. And there was an item done on uh, CNBC about silver by a very, very nice uh, correspondent who talked about it. I think she even showed the Reddit community, Wall Street Silver, on the screen. And she was very positive. But then the other guy on the panel, he ended that article. You know, he asked her, give me that uh, that bar of silver that she held in her hand. Give it to me just for a second. Let me have a look at it. And then he held it and he said to the camera, short this. And this is how the article ended. This is how the item ended. He said, short this. And on Reddit, everybody was celebrating. I remember those last two words. And I understood that this was meant to discourage people from holding silver. That is interesting. Yeah, I, I had not heard about that. I'll definitely check it out. Man, what a snake move for them to make. Thank you for listening to the Silver Hermit podcast. If you like this content, please donate in the link which appears in the description below. Please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and family. Hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I release a new video. Remember, I am not a licensed financial advisor. This video is intended for general informational purposes only and should not be regarded as investment advice. Before taking any investment decision, please consult with a professional financial advisor who may assess your personal investment objectives and needs.